We only have one soccer away for this house, yeah. but not for the others because we're not doing that anymore. Yeah. Because I understand where we are, we're a flood area, mm -hmm. right? And clay soils. Everyone has a soccer way, right? And then everyone has a ball, you yeah. know. <laughs> a lot of people have to then pump their um, soccer wares up because they get flooded because it's too much of a water. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like we're not really thinking about where we're living and what we're putting in, into it yeah. and how it's affecting us. So if they're flooding, it means they're flooding the whole water. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, so now here our domes are biodigested because under here is like a 17 cubic meter okay. and 14 cubic meter and then we have the portable one over there. Mm -hmm. So this, the, the whole, the soil here is all excavated. Yeah. But as you can see now everything, because it was just like dirt. Yes. But now everything's growing over here. Just a, a quick question on your biodigesters. Mm -hmm. You said that you do have some issues of flooding and prone prone to flooding does that affect them uh no not that i'm a no not that you've experienced not so that far. experienced so far uh, because yeah. i mean the way they built them and they plastered them and all that yeah. stuff so it's like a little hut down there yeah okay. so no not that we've experienced so we and loaded from here mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when you initially built them was there anything that you would change now having gone through the last several months and things like that in terms of their positioning in relation to the house is coming back to that idea of planning yeah yeah you know had, if i do it differently i'd plan everything so it's all connected and things could be under the ground because now yeah. it's just on top we're just making do with what we have yes right but if we had known how to connect it better like the toilet well we have the portable one because the toilets to a little house go to that yeah right but this one is purely animal manure just mm. you know we're growing food so it, it depends where we're putting the slurry on the fruit trees or yeah. on the fresh food but then at the end of the by the time it comes out of the slurry it's all processed yeah but you know sometimes mm, yeah. it gives you that separation and that's our little portable one well it's not that little but uh, it's our portable one it's it's essentially a vessel that digests the manure or you know human excrement uh -huh. so when you put in your manure human or whatever mm -hmm. it's processed and that gas comes out that oh, from the, yeah. the line there yeah gas comes out that we use to cook mm -hmm. and the by the air the the Extra affluence, yeah. affluence. It is a processed man, uh, fertilizer yeah. that we then put in the garden, but there's no smell to it. Yeah. So it's you know even if you had it's pigs and it's fully broken down. It's fully broken stage. down. I think it should be a low. If you have pigs, you have a bad digester because it would just kill mm. that smell. Otherwise, you just yeah. Yeah, but it's overpowering. It's overpowering. Mm. So that's basically what a biodigester is. So you can definitely take care of your bathrooms, mm -hmm. right? So if you don't want to dig about a uh, uh, a, a, uh, like what you put in here. Yeah, you can have this portable kind of, and you don't need a soccer wear. Mm -hmm. So if you want to protect your water source, because yeah. sometimes you only have a little spot in your in your yard. Mm -hmm. So if you're digging a boho and you're digging a, a soccer wear, yeah, right. It it will help you to pay the extra and have this, and then you can get gas from it too. Yes, as opposed to um, polluting your water source. And then, and what kind of volumes of gas are we talking about if, you, if one has a, a regular supply into it mm -hmm. are you, you you I would assume you'd have enough gas then for, to meet oh, yeah, household yeah. needs household needs yes and then some or and then some if you have the cow on site and you just load it because it's just oh, a matter okay. of how much you're loading right yeah. and then some you'd have to be I'd have to be making too many trips to Okay, yeah, yeah, the yeah. chicken place, but if it's right there and every day you have manure to feed it, yeah. we'll have more than enough. So this us. actually also sounds like if one had a processing side to the, uh, to, the, um, to the property as well, you'd actually be saving on inputs for, well, uh, say electricity or, or charcoal if one was doing that, yeah. if you're then producing your own gas that you could then yeah. be cooking and Yeah, like um, if we're like processing. making jams or things like that and we constantly needed uh, mm -hmm. power or to cook, yeah. right? We just have gas to cook. So from we're saving From money. our own waste. Yeah, from <laughs> our own waste, right? Because literally we're flushing away dollars, yes. literally. 
right? But worse, we're flushing it away with clean water, clean drinkable <laughs> water. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, that's not very smart there. But, you know, I think there's different ways, different ideas that people can incorporate it. And mm. seeing what people drive, I know they can afford this. Yes, no, right? definitely. All right, just one, one more kind of quick question. You've gone with the immovable ver uh, version and you've got the kind of transferable or movable version um, as well. If you had to use one, what would you prefer? Because obviously there's benefits to both. You can plan around one that you're putting into the ground if you're planning it in the planning stages of development. So you can kind of site it in such a way that it's going to maximize your, your usage of space and, and maybe the, the thing back. It can take more, as you were saying. Mm -hmm. But what would you, what would you go with for, yeah, for a household effect? For a household, I'd go with... I'd go with the portable one for household. Mm. Well, it's it's though it's portable, it's like really heavy. It can't be. Yes, you can't it's not gonna tie it up and move it away. Run away with it. Yeah. But you know, I'd definitely go with this because it's kind of easier to put in location. Yeah. Right. But if I was really thinking this one because of the bio slurry, I like it. But if I was doing things completely differently, mm. I'd just go with dry toilets. Oh really? Yeah, I'd just go Interesting. with dry. Interesting. But build it in such a way that you know it still looks nice, but yeah. You know, if you have a really little space, another project for another day, we'll talk about it, what, what, what we're doing there, but we're right by the water. Yeah. There's no way I'm putting in a, so uh, a soccer wear, yes. right? And then the dry toilet is way cheaper than, yeah, because it's just a matter of... Because uh, either way, these are both, the, you know, fairly large investments yes. in, in capital as well as then space exactly. in the grand scheme, isn't it? But, you know, if it funds are an issue, dry toilet. All mm. you need is a drum, some ingenuity. You got yeah. it. You made it, right? And at the end of the year, you still have manure. Yes. How? Okay, just a quick question, because I understand how you would get the slurry out of the portable one, but how do you get it out of the... There's like a soccer wear. Oh, okay. Behind somewhere over there. Yeah, because I've seen a number of yeah. kind of culverts here. Yeah. Is there so there's a system as it works its way down? Yeah, towards this is that. from the bigger one to the smaller one to the yeah, uh, and okay, the gas is, you know, then there's pipes that take the gas to the house and to mm. over here. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds like this was quite an investment, yeah, not just was, in terms of yeah, yeah, capital, yeah. but also in terms of labor and yeah, because later they had to really come and dig. They had to like spend a week digging the hole. Like yeah. literally, there's a hut underneath there. Wow. Certainly like 5,000 blocks, you know, the red bricks. Yeah. And initially it's an undertaking because you need like 300 bags of cow manure, fresh cow manure. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, initially, it's, it's eccentric. Yes. So for the person who's like, I ain't got time for all of that, go with this. <laughs> <laughs> and then the person who's like, I ain't got money for all of that, just go with a dry toilet. Yeah. So it, everyone can do something. So it, it kind of, it's nice actually, having gone through it, you can see to yeah. say, well, there's the benefits of this. If you have the, the space, yeah. the deep pockets, this is kind of a yeah. system that could work for you. If you have some space, not as deep pockets, this can work for you. If you have very empty no pockets, <laughs> no space. there's no space, this other system works for <laughs> you. So it's actually quite nice that there's different options. Yeah, yeah. Ways, and it? then, you know, the goodness why we did it here is, it's one thing for people to talk about it. It's another one people actually see. Hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, when you see it, it gives you other ideas. You can, okay, I can do this. You can figure out you know yeah so do you plan one day to have groups of people come through to kind of show them what yeah. you've done and, and how that can be incorporated because I think one of the things is you're doing it here behind walls yeah. your neighbors might think well I'm kind of crazy lady <laughs> there that's doing all these kinds of things but obviously more people beyond just the walls here in your neighborhood could actually really benefit from a lot of this knowledge and what you've learned in going through. Yeah, because that, um, yeah, thank you for the question. It's actually, agritourism is part of something that we're doing, right? Mm -hmm. Because we want people to come in and learn, yeah. right? Get ideas. We want people to replicate it, actually even do it better. Yeah. Come and see th if you can do it better. Absolutely, you go do it better. But just mm -hmm. let's all get together and make it a better place. Yeah. Right. So that's that's the idea generally. So when it's all working together, someone wants to do centropics sy or wants alternate uh, fewer means mm -hmm. live differently. They can come and see how they how they can incorporate it, where they fit, and things like that. And they can yeah. maybe have ideas, better ideas. It's an exchange of knowledge, right? Yeah. So yeah, we definitely plan to have people. No, it'd be fantastic. I think there's a lot of, of, of things that people could actually take from this. Not necessarily 
everything because I find one of those scenarios is that it's very difficult to see what someone's doing and then saying, oh, I'm going to replicate the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. But you kind of be Take able what to you pick can. and choose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> I have seen other systems like this where they are using animal manure mm -hmm. and um, getting gas and the slurry from that. This is the first time I've ever heard of actually having it plumbed into house. Uh, a house scenario where then you're using human manure effectively. Is there a concern in terms of human manure potentially if you're then taking those um, byproducts and incorporating them back into the vegetable garden of a contamination of bacteria or things that would affect us? making their way into the garden and then maybe making us sick? Well, by the time it comes out, it's fully processed. To start it, we put in like, uh, in this one, we put like 300 uh, um, bags of fresh cow manure specifically because it mm. has the enzymes that actually eat up all the bad stuff, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So you kind of basically make a stomach. Yeah. But a stomach for the manure so that when it comes out, it's processed and then it's broken down and it can go back in as uh, nutrients. Yeah. So it breaks down the nutrients, basically. I think the one thing that a lot of people won't quite understand as well is that they're anaerobic. Yes. It's not happening in the presence of oxygen. Yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of bacteria that we would have that would not survive, survive. in that. Um, and it's hotter than what our, our body what? temperature would be. So effectively, they're being broken down by enzymes, as you say, they're being broken down in the absence of, of oxygen and with heat. With heat, yeah. Um, and in a normal composting process, be it a, a compost pile, heat is one of the big things that kills, that kills the, weed yeah. seeds and bad bacteria and fungi because they have a very specific range. Mm -hmm. um, and this kind of condenses that time frame yeah. drastically, Yeah. Um, which our home composters don't do as, as nearly as efficiently. Um, and it's, it's somewhat pressurized because you see this gas in there, so that's yep. why it's come up, right? So yep. for the, for the um, affluent or whatever to come out, it has to be pressured out because then mm. there's no space. It's only that at the very end that comes out yeah. because of the pressure. So it's fully processed, the enzymes are fully worked on it. By the time it's coming, it's just yeah. nutrients, basically. It is, it is almost like living system like what we would have where you have the mouth at one end the stomach at the other end and then the outflow at the very other very, very far end and stuff like that it's, it's very true it's very interesting kinds of systems and uh, and i think yeah i think it would be fantastic if more people adopted them yeah um because there's a lot of as you say stuff that we throw out that really we don't have to we can yeah and then that's the other thing that goes in here even the vegetable cuttings like mm -hmm. you know if you cut it up yeah. Uh, table waste, yeah. it goes right in here. Yeah. So if, it, if my worms yeah. won't take it, yeah. it goes in here. Because meat products would be able to be yeah. taken in Absolutely. here, yeah. which you wouldn't put in a normal composting system yeah. and you wouldn't put it in into a vermicomposting yeah. system. So it's kind of like we have options. I'm like, okay, onions, okay, but yeah. biodigester, you know, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. Yeah, those things that can't go through the worms will come through here. Through here. Yeah. Yeah. All the chickens. All the chickens, yeah. <laughs> The portable one is probably maybe like a thousand dollars, right? Mm. Um, the bigger one is a little more than that, right? But this is where architecture and um, science and everything could work together if they were talking. Nine yeah. out of ten, if you go to an architect and you say you want a, a, a biodigester, what are you talking about? Just dig a sock because they don't, are not, are not, they're not aware of it or it's not. They have a field that they're playing in, so it's very difficult to find people who know how everything relates. Yeah. Right. How I can put my bio just the in so it, I can size it to a, a re regular residential house, and how mm -hmm. do we fit that all in? Nine out of ten, you are pioneering yeah. what you're doing, and the cost can be a little crazy because. <clears throat> it all has to do with pitch and everything. If you know you're going to have a biodigest, the way they do the piping and everything, everything has to work together. Otherwise, it's... Yeah, you have to put more energy into the system. Into the, the system, yeah. But it's getting better. I think more people are getting exposed, especially with all these energy shortages that we're having. People are realizing you have to do it differently. We can't yeah. go on doing the same thing, especially when we have the resources yeah. every day that we're flushing.